really quick little trick for you for stopping number reversals in their tracks. So this is a big problem for a lot of our students, small and bigger, our, our little kids and our teenagers. This is a problem, especially if they have dyslexia, they really can struggle with number reversals. And we have a little trick for you that actually stops it relatively fast. We had a student do this recently and he stopped reversing his numbers within two, three days, I think. And now he's doing it consistently the right way every single time, which is huge. So part of the problem with number reversals and what's happening with your child, why they do that is because they have no sense of where they're starting. So let's look at a blank page, why that's a little bit overwhelming. So if you've got a kiddo that has dyslexia or that's reversing their numbers or letters, part of it is because they have a little bit of directionality um, they're really driven by gross motor and so looking at a blank piece of paper like this is really intimidating and you'll actually see kids hovering with their pencil on the paper not really sure where to start so a lot of them will unbeknownst to them pick the bottom of the paper as their ground and they start forming numbers from the bottom to the top like this so if you've got a kiddo that makes a nine like this that is diagnostically significant that your child is choosing to do it that way tells us a lot about how their brain is wired. And the problem with doing that, making a nine from the bottom up and around like that, is that it's a really similar motion as the number six. Look at that. And so because kids have directionality issues in their mind, spatial reasoning, that might be uh, really tricky for them and they're gonna get those numbers mixed up because the motion feels really similar. So what we do is we help ground in the child with gross motor how the numbers are really formed going from the top to the bottom. So let's run through that really quick how I do that and you can give this a try at home with your kiddo and see if it helps. So the very first thing we do is we pull out a piece of paper, it's blank like this, and we draw a stick figure. Go ahead, doesn't have to be beautiful folks, arms and legs, okay? And we talk to the kids about how we're gonna form our numbers starting up here by the head always. So for example, if I'm making, let's start over here, a five, I'm gonna start on the left shoulder and I'm gonna go down over and around and put a hat on the top, okay? And to a kid, that makes a lot of sense. I'm starting on the left shoulder, so here, going down and around, okay? That makes a lot of sense to a kiddo like that. And a hat on top, so that going back up to the top. And that's one, one thing, let me tell you really quick, if your child struggles with left and right, you might wanna work on that for a little bit, about which one's left, which one's right. Um, so let's look at the number three. It's the same kind of idea. We start at the top and we go around to the right and make two bumps. Now here's where the gross motor connects in. I want you to have your child right on your back starting in the places that you told them to. So if they're making a five on your back, they're going to start on your left shoulder, go down and around and put a hat on top. Same with the number three. They're gonna start at the left shoulder and go around and make two bumps, right? And so that's really helpful and that's the key is it's gross motor and it's movement and they're getting a sensation as they're touching your back and they're gonna write it on your back first. Then they're gonna turn around and you're gonna write the numbers on their back. So if your child makes a mistake drawing it on your back, you're going to immediately have them turn around and you're going to draw it on their back. And it's going to help really solidify how these numbers are formed. We did this with a student, and like I said, two, three days, he had it down, no more mistakes. He was stopped it altogether. So I thought it would be helpful to have you see how we form the numbers from the top so that we stop the bottom to the top behavior so that the emotions are different for the students. So the input is different into their brain and they don't make those mistakes anymore. So with five and three, I showed you that, the down and around. So let's do, we'll start from the very beginning here. Okay, so obviously one, we start at the top and go down. Okay, some kids really do want to start at the bottom and go up, make sure they start at the top. So in this case, I would say start in the middle of my back, 
by my neck from the top go down that's the number one now let's make two start on my left shoulder go around and down so see how that's a kind of like a backward C it's like a ear and over okay so that's one and two let's do three and four starting with the three on my left shoulder around and down and the four we start at the left shoulder again do you see how we're doing that repetitive motion okay and this is two motions starting with the four left shoulder down and over right shoulder down okay here we go let's do five okay five we're gonna do start on the left shoulder down over and around and a hat on top same with six this time we're gonna start on the right shoulder and go down and around seven we start on the left shoulder over and down eight we start on the right shoulder and we go make an s and then close it now that's really important eight is a difficult one because a lot of kids like to make snowman eights and the problem with that is the the loops that they make never touch so it doesn't look like an eight instead it looks like two zeros stacked which is not going to work for us so teaching a student to start on the right shoulder make an s and then close it is the best way to get a student to make the number eight okay let's finish up with the number nine it's probably my student's favorite one we start on the right shoulder make a circle a small circle and a stick and from my trainer Marilyn she calls it a rotten apple on a stick so we make a and we make this silly voice like this rotten apple on a stick like that and kids get it right away and so the method is we're gonna go back and forth back and forth mom dad parent child you know have them do it with their siblings whoever they want to they could do it on their dog's back if they wanted to but that gross motor movement and tying it to the body is going to help them figure out where to start on the paper and do it consistently and the reversals will stop really quickly you make sure to send in your questions and we'll answer it the multi-sensory way don't forget to subscribe share and like our videos